Yeah, I mean, as we end 2012, it's been a, a pretty spectacular year in a lot of ways. The movement for trans equality continues to grow. We've had some spectacular advancements this year, a lot of them done pretty quietly by the Obama administration and, and some of the staff that they've got in place. So that, you know, at this point we have clarification that transgender people are covered under Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, um, under the sex discrimination provisions, meaning that you know any transgender person who works in a place with 15 or more employees now has legal recourse if they're fired or not hired merely because they're transgender. We didn't have that kind of protection um, you know, before May, so that's an incredible advancement. And similarly, there's been, um, we've had guidance from the Housing and Urban Development that any HUD funding facilities and programs cannot discriminate against transgender people. There is the ability to get a passport, um, which most of us were not able to for a long time with the accurate name and gender. Um, with the fact that federal employees now have um, employment rights as transgender people. There is increased evidence that suggests that um, the Affordable Care Act's non-discrimination provision should be interpreted to include transgender people. It, it means we actually have a, a floor of civil rights that we just didn't have a year ago. So we, we need to continue to do the work at the state-by-state -state level to make sure that all of us have very clear laws um, to give us protection. But we've got a, an equal responsibility now to do education, to make sure that our mem our, the community members understand that they have a basic right. Um, so that we know how to file a complaint at the EEOC office, we know how to talk to HUD, we know how to talk to a hospital if we're experiencing discrimination because of our gender identity or expression. And we need to make sure our employers and our facilities know that they've got a responsibility towards us too. So it's a really exciting time. You know, I think we'll be interested to see what happens since the re-election of Obama. I'm very hopeful we'll see the passage of an Employment Non-Discrimination Act, if not an uh, even more comprehensive legislative bill uh, to more proactively show that we do have um, you know, real basic protections across the board. But I think we've got to be vigilant because we know as we are increasingly visible and powerful that we still have people who are not experiencing the same benefits of some of this progress. We have a lot of folks of color who are still being over-policed and over-incarcerated. We still have people who are having a hard time around immigration and need asylum. Um, we know there's still high levels of violence against members of our community. So we need to figure out how we really build a, a, a movement that um, prioritizes racial and economic justice and we need to plan for what our movement and our community will look like once issues like ENDA or marriage are resolved. So it, it's an exciting moment and I think we, it's time for us to really plan for the long haul and figure out what we need and what we're going to look like in the days to come.